Hey, uh, this is another game from Snook, who is in the Silver League as of the beginning of this season, so pretty recently. It was bronze last season. Uh, and this is a new build that we're... It's funny, because he, he worked out a, a neat 10-minute uh, opening, right, that gets you a lot of infantry upgrades at, at a reasonable time, while also expanding really quickly and getting a bunker before the 5-minute stalker poke time that you need to have a bunker up at. Um... Right, you need to start your bunker at four minutes, and it looks like it's going to be a little late. In, in TVZ, this is a lot riskier than it would be in TV, TVP, but whatever. I mean, again, until you lose repeatedly to, to Ling Pokes, I wouldn't be too worried about it. Uh, so the idea is to try to get a build that works in all, all three matchups, but the infantry upgrade opening uh, in, in TVZ didn't transition super well into into the mech style that, that he's been practicing in, in TVZ, so it's kind of funny. He's like, let's start off with three racks and lots of infantry upgrades, and then go mech. <laughs> okay, so all that money you spent on infantry upgrades is kind of wasted then. But the most important thing is money, right? Look at this money. Crazy amounts of money. Just huge, huge, crazy amounts of money. 36 workers at 8 minutes, that's unbelievably awesome. The benchmark is 30 and he's up to a million, zillion, trillion. Uh-oh, uh cutting workers by accident. The whole point of this build is never to do that, but whoops. <laughs> I guess in order to get these bunkers back up, he was a little scared, so he cut workers. Uh, 10 minutes, 44 is the, is the worker benchmark, and look at that, he's got exactly 45. One concern I have, of course, is that this is a tiny army for 10 minutes. And if you include Siege Mode, which is 200, and these upgrades, which is 400, and I believe Combat Shield? No, not Combat Shields. Then it's slightly better. I guess that's 2600, but that's still super small. You gotta, you gotta remember that upgrades, it's unfinished upgrades, don't count towards your army size. So, yeah. I'm still worried, but with all these tanks at the front, I think with end bunkers, I think you'll be okay, no matter what. So it seems pretty safe as long as they don't do anything that comes behind the line. Behind the line. So money is building up. Really, the, the consistent problems that we've always seen were that you're really good up until about eight minutes, and then from eight minutes on, you just get further and further behind on your money. Especially your minerals, because you're really good about spending your gas, but then your minerals just pile up because you never get enough racks. Or in the case of a mech build, you never get enough reactor factories for Hellions. Um, in, in mech, because, okay, with Marines, the more you make, the better. But with Hellions, after about 14 Hellions, the additional Hellions don't help. So with mech builds, a lot of people take that extra money that you can't really spend efficiently and throw down a bunch of extra command centers uh, so that they end up with like five orbitals and then planetary fortresses at all their expos. And then you can cut workers because you've you got all these mules. So minerals were never really very beneficial to a mech build in the first place. So why not? replace some of your mineral miners with mules and it all works out. So I do recommend that in general. Obviously you, it wouldn't start until about until after your upgrades are done. Also it's weird that you got infantry upgrades instead of mech upgrades but you said in the email that that was just kind of a mistake and that when you're running mech obviously you should be getting mech upgrades. Uh, this is pretty good though. 63 workers. Uh, 52 is the maximum on two bases so you can see that there's a lot of oversaturation down here. Uh, you've got an additional eight workers on that base and an additional zero workers on this base. So you just have eight too many workers and that's fine. But you're still producing workers and you're not making a third command center. So you're getting further and further behind on the, on the efficiency of your saturation or whatever. And also, out of 15 minutes is when your first mineral patch will tend to mine out on your, on your main base. So it looks like this one has a hundred left. Uh, so really with Th even even more incentive to cut worker production at, at about 12 minutes or whatever because as minerals uh, as these mineral patches dry up at your main you can transfer the workers over to your third so you don't even really need 72 workers like 72 workers is what it takes to saturate three bases if all of them have eight patches but you really don't want full saturation anymore once usually you get your third at the same time as your main starts to run dry um, 
And with a mech build, you can see you have 2,000 minerals and only 500 gas. Uh, and so you're building Hellions because you're saying, well, I don't have enough gas, I might as well build Hellions. But at a certain point, Hellions are no longer beneficial. Like right now you have 17 Hellions, you don't need more. Uh, in every fight, you should endeavor to lose at least half of your Hellions and none of your expensive units, and then you can replace those Hellions. So that's how the, the mech build works, is that you have all this extra minerals and it doesn't make any sense to spend it on more Hellions, so you throw away some Hellions and then replace them. Throw away Hellions, replace them, throw away Hellions, replace them. So two ways to spend your minerals in mech is lose some Hellions and replace them, and the second way is make extra command centers. Especially, especially additional um, uh, uh, workers. So the point of this replay was just generally to say, hey, look, I'm able to spend my money. I'm able to hit some really good worker benchmarks. I'm able to get a crazy good economy and just compare the economy of Snook to his, to his opponent. Now, obviously, in a Masters League game or whatever, this would be a good economy, but kind of uh, a not great build. But compared to what the Zerg has at this point, the 95 supply to 200 supply, this is a huge, huge, huge deal to, to really have macro this game. And you're definitely going to make it out of Silver League just doing this. You know, it doesn't matter which units you make, it doesn't matter how well you can use them. As long as you have twice as many units as your opponent, you just kind of auto win. Um, and that's not to say we shouldn't work on making sure you get the right units and you use them correctly. It's just to say that even if we screw that up by accident, we're still going to win. <laughs> so I loved this, this build. I wish um, that you had had your bunkers behind supply depots instead of making them part of this wall. Uh, I wish that you had not cut workers early early on and that you had cut workers at about 12 minutes I wish that you had made your third command center at about 10 or 11 or even 13 minutes But definitely way sooner than 17 minutes I wish that you had not gotten any infantry upgrades and just gotten double mech upgrades all game And I wish that you had five factories like we talked about. Oh, you do have five factories. So never mind. This is great Good job. I like it. Five factories is the mech standard, baby. This is how you mech. How you mech. Uh, so you stopped dropping mules, and you moved your CC, and... Did you lose your CC or move it? It feels like you didn't lose it, but it's gone. What the heck? I guess you did. I didn't see it die. Uh, yeah. So great job. You obviously won this game. You're way ahead in every category. And let's see how you move your army when you cross the field, because that's important. Uh, you want to be tanking with these Hellions because you can replace Hellions so easily because you have so much minerals. Uh, that's how mech works. You have tons of free minerals. But on, in the same regard, you don't want to lose all your Hellions at once. You want to lose some of them and then lose, lose some more later. Uh, so you want to keep your army in a pretty tight ball here. Don't worry about fungals. Mech, mech is not very susceptible to fungals. You also want to bring some SCVs, especially when you find yourself with 48 SCVs on 8 mineral patches. No reason not to bring some with you. You can replace them as you push out. And there's nowhere for them to mine anyway, so no reason not to bring them. So I love this. You're moving from here to here. You're not moving all the way to his base in one big motion. And you're moving from here to here, from, from this point to this point. That's great. Tiny movements keep your army in a nice tight ball. You don't want to be moving all the way across the field at once. A lot of people have that problem, but you do not seem to, and that's great. I also love that you sieged up far enough back that your first tank shot is not going to hit anything. That's really important, because if you try to be greedy and get your tanks in, close enough to actually do huge damage, uh, you risk him hitting you before your tanks are sieged up. And this is really great. Just one tank in range to pressure this hatchery, the rest of the tanks are just covering your back. Really good. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. You stood no chance whatsoever. This is definitely too many Hellions. And at 200 unit space, you've got to be really careful because if you see a tech switch to something and you want to make the units that you need to defend against that tech switch, and you have 200 unit space and he refuses to fight you, you can't. You're screwed. So uh, definitely stop Hellion production a little bit earlier than this. And that is all, dude. Really good job. I, I liked it a lot. Good work, Snucky.